Today we've got a YouTube first for you. To celebrate the extended Edinburgh tram route, we've got a bit of a challenge. From here at the airport, we're going to take you on a very unique city tour by getting off at every single stop until the other end of the line at New Haven. Now, will there be much to see on the way or is there a reason this hasn't been done yet? Well, join us and we'll find out together. Now, because we're doing this challenge today, we've got to go for the most expensive ticket, which is called the Network Day Ticket. And believe it or not, it's 12 quid each. 24 quid to do this challenge. Right, there we go. Confirm. That's expensive. Do not lose these. Will they be checking them every single time? I'm not sure. On every single stop? Maybe. Maybe. Already this feels like the most stupid challenge we've ever done, but there we go. Whose idea was it? Yours. Aye, so this is our first stop, Ingleson Park and Ride, and as the name suggests, it's no more than a car park. It may be our first stop, but if you were coming the other way from the city centre, this is the last stop that you can get off at using just a normal day ticket. To go any further, you would need one of those special airport tickets, which cost a lot more, so you will find that a lot of people will just get off here and walk the 15 minutes to the terminal. I know how to give you an exciting day, eh? Yeah, there will be lots of standing and waiting. Oh, there's a tram coming. Oh, there are 23 stops on this route. It's going to be a long day, but stick with it because this might be the boring bit at the moment, but it should get more interesting as we get nearer to the city centre. Right, this stop is called Gogerburn, and there is a Gogerburn, so maybe we should go and try and find it. There's also the RBS bridge there. I'd like to try and walk across that, but I don't know if we've got time. be walking today. Just a wee bit. So there we go, we're on the RBS bridge. That takes you to the Royal Bank of Scotland headquarters or something. Oh, this video, eh? I tell you, if this ever makes it to the channel, I'll be amazed. Where is the Gogo burn? There it is. If you board a tram without a valid ticket on board fare, it would be £10. That's less than we paid. It's worth it. <laughs> so let's see how much it would be for a normal day ticket without using the airport. So excluding Edinburgh Airport, day ticket, five quid for adults, 250 for kids. Right, our next stop is Edinburgh Gateway. Look at my notes, they're all crunched up already. Oh. We can play it backwards and say there was no driver. <laughs> Edinburgh Gateway. 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 Oh no, I can't read. 
that their tickets must be purchased, validated or activated before boarding the tram. Swedenborg Gateway is a funny one, it's a big fancy station but I've never used it myself and I've never seen anyone else use it. It's like one of those interchanges from the tram lines to the normal trains and I think from here you can get on to the Fife Circular and then up towards Dundee, Perth, Inverness. Hi. Hi. We got on at different doors. See, it's getting exciting now. Look, shopping centre. You <laughs> don't like the shopping centre. I don't. No, this shopping centre, the Guile, it was opened in like 1993 or something. I used to remember coming here to get my camera films developed and being so bored that I had to wait for two hours. So that shows how old this place is. Look at this, Steve's Tours of Edinburgh. We've got a car park and a shopping mall. It doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> Trust me, it will get better. We might even go for a drink at some point. I'll need a drink after this. I think so. All tickets, smart cards and then tickets must be purchased, validated or activated before boarding the tram. Oh, busy, busy. I know, I know, I know. No, Well, that was our first busy tram, but we're never going to have to find a seat, are we? So this is Edinburgh Park Central. And just when we needed some excitement, we've arrived in the boring corporate headquarters of Edinburgh. Although they are trying to brighten it up a bit with some art installations and make this more of a cultural hub, but I think there's a long way to go. I'll tell you what. It must be the quietest part of Edinburgh, so... Oh yeah, because what's happening today? The king is in town! Aye, that's right, the king is in town today. He's buying a new sword or something. Or getting presented with one at St Giles Cathedral. But St Giles is kind of in the old town. Well, it is in the old town. And the tram route goes through the new town, more like. So we should be okay. I don't think we're going to have any disruption. <laughs> right, don't worry. The tour next takes us to... Edinburgh Park? Is that is that where we are? Oh no, we're at Edinburgh Park. <laughs> oh no, this is Edinburgh Park Central. So next we've got Edinburgh Park Station, which is another train interchange. And then we're at Bankhead, and my only notes for Bankhead are no reason to get off the train unless you live here. There are people everywhere. Busy, busy. I tell you what though, it's a beautiful day, eh? but here we are at Edinburgh Park. Now I used to work just up the road, I used to go to university just up the road as well, and I think you can sometimes get the smell of the Burton's Biscuit Factory from here, if the wind's blowing the right way. There's a tram every seven minutes, although at times there's a tram every two minutes. So we're getting there, we're getting towards the city centre. And then the new line, which is the same line, it's just extended really. Yes. So we shouldn't be saying it's a new line. Oh, sorry, it's not like the trams in Katowice, is it? <gasps> oh, wow. Uh... Ticket. That's true. Yeah. We're past like one third Are of we? our bus stops already. Really? Tram stops. <laughs> bus stops, oh no. I think so. Oh no. Oh no. I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> you almost broke our challenge as well. <laughs> Imagine. Aye, so this is the stop that you do not get off at unless you're going to work or you live around here or something. 
<laughs> if you're still watching this video, thank you. Oh, this machine you can use coins. I didn't know that. In all of them, you can use coins. Really? Oh, yes. I've never noticed that before. Yes, all of them had exactly the same thing on the side. Wow, you're observant, aren't you? Well, I learned today that you don't need to press the button to open the door in a tram. That's something. I must. <laughs> Oh, this is quieter. Every time. Cheers, mate. See you later. Okay, so Sockton. I guess you could go up to the zoo or Kerstorfen from here. Or if you go the other way, you could go to the jail. <laughs> Sockton prison. <laughs> the guy that was checking our tickets on the tram, he said you can do this as a drinking game. But I can't imagine all 23 stops with a drink at each one. But he did say from Picardy Place, where the new extension goes, there is a pub at every stop. I wonder how he knew that, eh? This is Ball Green Station. This used to be our local tram stop when we lived in Edinburgh, just up there. And from here, you can actually start to see the castle off in the distance. And just right next to us, we've got the Jenner's Depository. That was like the store for Jenner's Department Store on Princess Street back in the day. And they even had stables here for the horse and carts. So that shows how old that building is. You have to press the button. Well, I think you can probably tell what this stop is called. It's Murrayfield. And you know these steps over there behind us? We used to train on those all the time. Running up and down, I'm not sure my knees could take it anymore. But anyway, Murrayfield Stadium is the home of Scottish rugby and loads of concerts as well. I think we're going to see Taylor Swift there next year. That's not very good feedback on my tour, is it? It's because we, we were up before 6am and I was watching cartoons until midnight. <laughs> That's us at Haymarket now, so I guess you can say that's us really in the city centre. And Haymarket has Edinburgh's second station, which is just over there behind us, Haymarket Station. But there's also a pub here, and I think this is our first pub visit of the day. Well, it's almost midday. I got you something. What? Oh, wow. Where did you find that? On the pavement. Really? Yes. You're in Edinburgh, this could be... Precious. <laughs> this could be part of the king's sword. Uh, maybe. Oh, she's singing now because she's going to the pub. Well, we always say it's after midday yesterday. So True. after yesterday's midday. Or you can say there's after midday somewhere in the world. Oh. 
So over behind us here we've got Ryrie's at Haymarket Station. This is one of Edinburgh's best historic pubs and I believe it's just been renovated quite recently so we need to go in for a drink don't we? Established 1862. So how old is it? Oh putting you on the spot here. Uh, 161. Well done. Thanks. Let's go. Let's go. It's your round. Run, run, run. See, it all gets stressful when you get to the city centre, doesn't it? Yeah. Living on edge. We're now at Coates Crescent in the West End and this is in the heart of the posh new town. We've got a statue here of William Gladstone. He was a four-time British Prime Minister. And this statue used to be at St Andrews Square until it was moved here in 1955. And this big tower over here in front of us, I'm not even sure what it's called, but it always looks very Italian to me, Venetian. Welcome to Princess Street. <laughs> so we're now in Princess Street. This used to be like the main shopping street of Edinburgh, but now there's new malls and you've got George Street a couple of streets back, so it's not quite as nice now. But there is something we'd like to show you here. I'm a bit bad. So the four o'clock this year is celebrating a hundred years of the Flying Scotsman and it also tells us that it's just after 12.30 so we've been on this challenge now for three hours. Does it feel like three hours? It feels like 13 hours. <laughs> I think it's actually quite quiet here because everyone is going to be up at the old town seeing the king and his new sword. But not us. But not us. Welcome to stop number 15, St Andrews Square. I'm all over this challenge now, I tell you. We've got about nine stops to go. But again, St Andrews Square is really cool, right in the heart of the city. And there's something cool over there.
Now this is just like a bank and it's your old bank, isn't it? It was my old bank, yes. But inside it's beautiful. We'll try and film it if we can get away with it. We'll ask. Right, where are we? Is that Princess Street? I think so, yeah. I think so. So we're around here somewhere? Yeah. There we go, the Royal Bank of Scotland. If that was my bank, I'd be saying they've got too much of my money. Edinburgh city centre, always got the noise of construction somewhere. And this building over behind us, I've always loved this place, but now it's just another fancy hotel in Edinburgh. It's called the Glen Eagles Townhouse. Glen Eagles, of course, is a famous golf resort in Scotland. And this has brought the brand to the capital. I bet you can't get a cheap room in there. 475 pounds. What? 475 pounds. For one night, 475 quid? Yes. Now this is a big moment because the next tram we're going to get on is going to take us from the old route onto the new route, the extension. Because the tram used to stop at York Place but that station has been decommissioned and now we're going to Picardy Place. The sun is well and truly out as we arrive at the first of the new stops. Although you can see there's still a bit of construction going on here. Up there you've got the St James's Quarter, we've got the Omni Centre and the Playhouse Theatre which seems to be getting refurbished at the moment. That's one of the biggest stages in the UK at that theatre and over 3,000 seats. And then the tram will continue down Leith Walk and that's where we will be going in about four minutes. I don't really know what else to say from here. There is the Conan Doyle pub in the corner, as you can see just behind me. And that's because Arthur Conan Doyle, he lived here when he was a kid on Picardy Place. I think it was number 11. And that's number 12. So, somewhere there. We need lunch. We do need lunch. Mm. Maybe next stop? Okay. <laughs> McDonald Road, this is my old patch, but even since I was here, everything's kind of changed. But there's lots of cool like cafes and little independent stores because we're on Leith Walk now, and that'll take us all the way down towards the shore and New Haven where we'll finish today. But for now, we are just kind of looking for somewhere to eat. Oh, Harbour and Hobbies, I remember that store. Let's go and we look at that one. Aye, shops like Harburn, they're just absolute icons of Leith Walk. I've been here for years, decades. Okay. It's times like this, I wish this was live and we could ask you guys, where can we go for lunch? Because we've got no idea. And I'm sure you've got some amazing tips around here because it is full of incredible little places. Victoria's closed as well. We've tried a couple of places now to get lunch, but we seem to have arrived at the worst possible time. Places are either closed or they're not serving food anymore. So I think we just continue on down the walk. I'm losing my voice here. Welcome to Balfour Street. Elvis Shakespeare's, another cracking old place. 
We're just walking back up the hill from Balfour Street a wee bit because we spotted an old pub, which is now a different name, but it's a very important pub. Aye, so just behind us here we've got the Beer House, which used to be called the Boundary Bar, because this marks the official boundary between Leith and Edinburgh, which used to be completely separate. In fact, the story goes that back in the day, they used to have separate closing times as well. So when one pub closed, you could just hop across the line to the other side and get your last drink of the night. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but this is the boundary to Leith. But we're halfway down Leith Walk, we still haven't found any lunch. Leith Walk has changed, it's all like avocado and sourdough these days, but everywhere's just serving coffee now, very few places have actually got food at quarter to three in the afternoon, it's a bit weird. We will find something, I'm sure of it. We've got a wee bit of a delay, there's just been an announcement that due to congestion in the city centre, the trams are running late, and that's a problem because up there, the buses and the trams run along the same road, so they can get held up just like the buses, so that's not ideal, but just a wee bit longer to wait. We were waiting like 25 minutes for this bus. Tram. Tram. I'm an old bee, do you like me? Yeah. made it to the foot of the walk and we're still starving. I think we're just going to end up in a Greg's, I'm serious. Aye, we're ready for all the abuse, we just had to get a Greg's because we we're so hungry, but we'll try and get something proper to eat later, okay? We've made it to the foot of the walk, we've just had some disgusting food and we're standing in front of what used to be Leith Central Railway Station until 1952. As the name suggests, we're right at the foot of the walk and we're just waiting for the next tram now. I feel like I need a salad or a soup. Due to congestion in the city, there will be an extended wait time for the next tram. Thanks for your patience. made it to the shore now and we're full of regret because we can see little coffee shops and cafes that we could have gone to instead of eating Greg's but we just cashed in far too early and we're just in front of this old burn statue which has been hidden away since 2019 as part of the tram renovation project but it's nice to see it back again. Who else just wants to press the big red shiny button whenever you see it? Maybe information is just them talking to you, no? I think you'll speak to a person. Oh, I'm like, you want something from Greg's? Front! What the front? Please. Front, front, front! Port of Leith, two more to go. The tram schedules seem to be all over the place today because we just got off a tram and that's another one turning up straight away. It's a wee bit weird, isn't it? Do you think it's just busy traffic? I think that I don't know, but it's something. I must admit, I like it down the shore and the first thing we've got here is the Albert Dock Cranes. 
and they're a favourite for photographers and artists. You can see why. Aye, let's go along a wee bit further. There's more stuff to see along here. We've got the old yacht, which is called Fingal, which is now another five-star hotel in Edinburgh, but it looks really cool. We actually looked at staying there at one point, but it was 350 quid a night, and we thought, oh, it'd be really cool for a video to do one from there, but 350 a night is just stretching it a wee bit far. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. We just heard a jet engine, and we looked up, and the red arrows were flying past. They must have been here for the king. But we just missed it, I'm afraid, by about one minute. Yeah, two minutes. Sorry about that. Aye, so it's quite cool here. So we've got the Fingal, which is that fancy five-star hotel now. Over in the background, we've got one of the big proper ships. I think that might be like a cable-laying ship or something. And over here, what I thought was a cruise ship, it could actually be a ferry because it's a Talink. But I think Talink serves the Baltic. It's routes like Tallinn to Helsinki, for example. But I've got no idea what it's doing over here. Oh no, here we go again. We've got to get this tram, we've got to get it. We need to finish this challenge. Ocean Terminal, penultimate stop, and there's a really cool Navy ship down there. I don't think it's British Navy, but we're going to have a look at that. And we've got the big shopping centre and cinema complex here as well, which with the trams will, I think, be getting a lot more popular because a lot of the units were empty for a while, but it should be filling up again now. Aye, this must be the coolest ship we've seen all day. It's called the Fort Victoria. It's an RFA ship, which is Royal Fleet Auxiliary. So it's like a tanker and supply ship to the Royal Navy. But it's absolutely massive. Ah, with this new distillery, it's a bit of a building site just now because there's a, I think it's an Anthony Gormley statue out in the bay there that you can see, but we can't get anywhere near it just now. But, to be fair, round this side we've got the most famous ship of them all, Britannia. Yes, we're in a mall, but I think along here we can turn right somewhere and get a better view of Britannia. Is it down there? Yeah. Let's go for it. Ah, there she is. Well, it's quite apt that we come down to see Britannia on a day that Charlie's in town. In fact, if I'd been the king, I would have been like, let's go down there for dinner, we'll get a chippy. In fact, we'll just stay overnight. One stop to go. I can't wait. <laughs> Me too. Oh, let's finish this. Who would have thought that getting a tram from the airport to New Haven would be so tiring? Here we go, the last journey. Are you looking forward to it? Yes, I'm, I'm looking, looking forward, forward to it being over. Yes, thank you. It's like that seat's been reserved for you. Here we go for the final time. High five. Ta -da!
Well, there we go, folks. We're at New Haven Harbour at the end of the line. Well, in fact, a bit beyond the end of the line. We thought the tram would come along this far, but it doesn't. It stops a way back there. But we just thought we'd wander along to the harbour for our outro. Well, that was a tiring day. Um, who would have thought that sitting on a tram all day would be that tiring? But the last section, the new section, was really bad for delays. So we were just hanging about quite a lot. And we're both very tired now, so... Yeah, I think we just need to get a tram back up to the city centre and then a train home to Montrose. It's been a long day. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.